first of all, we're gonna go with my favorite cool season grass type, which is perennial ryegrass. This is something that in the past, it wasn't necessarily the most popular cool season option, but over the years, as cultivars have gotten better and better, and I've done more and more testing, I see that it does very well throughout various different conditions, and I absolutely love it. So let's go over the pros. One would be it has this very soft and fine texture. Probably not quite as soft as fine fescue, but as far as texture goes, it's gonna have a fairly fine blade. It's gonna be very soft under your feet. Two would be the darkest cool season grass that I've found. So I think that surprises a lot of people, but I've done various different testing with elite kinds of bluegrass right next to my ryegrass, putting that right against tall fescue out in my test plots. And I've been pleasantly surprised this has the darkest color of any of the grasses that I've tested. Now again, remember that there's various types of ryegrass, so some of them aren't as dark as the elite kinds, but if you pick the best types of ryegrass, you're gonna get an amazing color out of it. It can tolerate a low cut to a somewhat medium cut. I've been mowing my yard down down to a half an inch sometimes in spring and fall, no issues with that whatsoever. And I've pushed it out of my test plots up to three inches. I don't personally love it up at the taller cut, it can do that. So we're gonna talk about a con here in a moment, but I think the taller that the ryegrass goes, the more that you're gonna get some seed heads and stalks that come into it. Keeping it somewhat of a medium cut, half inch to maybe two inches or so, would be the ideal spot for this. The other great thing about ryegrass, amazing stripes. It has a really shiny leaf blade, so when it gets bent over, the light reflects off of it very well, and you get some amazing stripes out of ryegrass. It can tolerate some shade. I've had it on the north side of my house previously. I do have some in the mixture down in the shade testing that I'm doing at the new property, and it's been doing fine in both of these situations, so it can handle some shade. If you have a really dense shade area, then I might mix in something else, but we'll talk about that as we get to the fine fescue section. So some of the cons of ryegrass, I would say, it definitely would do best with irrigation. It's not the most drought tolerant grass I've ever seen, but especially along sidewalks. If it starts to dry out and I don't stay on top of it, I have seen some die off from this. So whenever someone asks me about ryegrass, I would say for the best scenario, you're gonna wanna have irrigation or be able to water it. We briefly touched on it in the pros section, but the seed heads and stalks on ryegrass can be really prolific. They can be an issue that goes on for a longer part of the year than most people would probably wanna see. When it happens in spring when grass wants to go to seed and it wants to reproduce, especially on perennial ryegrass, you'll get a lot of these really stemmy stalk type plants. They can be hard to mow, they can be hard to get a clean cut on, and then after this dies off, they're gonna turn to a brown stem. Throughout the yard here this year out at the property, I've seen a lot of ryegrass that looks like it needs water, it looks stressed, but it's actually just all those stems and stalks that are not breaking down very fast. So keep that in mind, like I said, on a taller cut, when I'm around three quarters of an inch, you're consistently cutting that grass, it's not really allowing it to go to seed. I don't see many issues here whatsoever with that. If you really wanna go for ryegrass, I would try to keep it mowed fairly low if you can and consistently mow it during that seed head stage. Ryegrass can also be susceptible to fungus, things like pythium or gray leaf spot. These are issues with ryegrass that, especially on pythium, if you're not careful with it, it can wipe out large areas of your yard very quickly. I use a phosphite to prevent this as much as possible since I'm doing a spoon feeding program on my turf. Every two weeks or so, I'll put down an application of this phosphite to help defend off pythium. Also, you may need to look into some fungicides to help prevent some of these other diseases in ryegrass. So in one more con I would say is that it can withstand heat. I'm doing really well here in the 90s for most of June, most of July here. I wouldn't say that it does best if you have 90s in your area for four months or so. I think about three months of a high soil temperature is about all ryegrass can handle in my experience here. And it doesn't all die off at that point, but it does start to show some stress and sometimes the genetics of the plant are pushed as far as it can go. But that's about the point here where it starts to get cooler again and then it withstands that fine. But if you had an extended period of really high soil temps, extended period of really hot weather with ryegrass, I probably would consider a different grass type. What my main goal has been, has been to provide this information to you, but also provide you with elite seed so that you don't need to go searching high and low for which ones of these cultivars are going to look good, have drought tolerance, fungus tolerance, all those things. I've compiled those in my elite brand seed here so that all of that is done for you. And I really appreciate all your support over the last couple seasons since I launched this grass seed. We have all of the types that you need, ryegrass, bluegrass, tall fescue, and the shade blend as well. So go ahead and check that out if you would. I really appreciate your support on the grass seed. We've had so many happy customers with it, and I would love for you to be one of those as well. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.